So you were talking about how you were speaking to friends, you were speaking to family, and you were starting to get more informed both on the unofficial forums like LAHKG and some maybe more reputable news sources. When did you really decide to start participating? When did you decide to start marching in the protests? You said it was when Carrie Lam was ignoring us. Which part of that? Mm, I think Carrie Lam's part is just one little section of it. Um, I like taking photos. I wish to take some more impressive shots um, for the whole movement. But then after going out for a couple of times, I feel that taking photos is not really helping. Um, it only satisfies my, satisfy my own wants, but I'm not really helping. It feels like I'm consuming the whole uh, whole, whole movement. I try to impress others by taking some good shots, but that should be what journalists and reporters do. And after going out for a couple of times, I feel that in the daytime, everything was peaceful, but once the sun's gone, the police came out and shot people. And that's the moment I felt that I had to help as a participant, but just not a photographer. And this is when you decided to start participating on the front line? Yes. What are the different ways that protesters use to not only show their dissatisfaction with the government, but also make sure to maintain their own safety? This be water strategy, would you be able to explain that a little for me? So, uh, uh, be water is originated from Bruce Lee, okay, and the main strategy is not to set, okay, we usually set some roadblock for every demonstration. However, a group of people tend to stay until the police arrive in front of them and arrest them. But if you mean to be water, it means that, okay, we are not trying to set a roadblock, okay, and we set our own territory. No, we are not doing that. However, we have to take into consideration every single aspect that could cause us a great cause. And we try not to risk our safety and life because we know the whole movement is lasting longer and longer, okay? It won't end after one particular demonstration. And therefore, be water means, okay, I'm trying to move to different places like water, and we're trying to do different strategies. Sometimes we go demonstration, sometimes we go for the peaceful, peaceful march, and sometimes we just go to different shopping malls and shout our slogans. And that is the way we call be water, okay? Not to be arrested, not to be caught, not to get hurt, because we still have a long journey to go. Now, speaking of that long journey, you're talking about all these different things that you do, whether it's being on the front lines, it's setting up roadblocks, or it's tearing down the roadblocks and moving to another location, or it's showing up at the Sha Tin Mall and singing uh, the Hong Kong movement anthems. For all of this, there's actually no centralization. There's no sort of deciding force that's leading this rally, very unlike the Occupy movement of 2014. So how are these decisions made? Um, how do you guys coordinate your movements? We did make a mistake in the uh, umbrella movement. We trust the leaders who can represent us. However, we failed. And after these years, we, use, we try to use different social medias or instant messaging apps to connect one another. At the end of the day, we are not trying to get a unanimously single voice, but we are trying to group up people with the same stories, with the same opinions, or people with the same mindset. And therefore, besides LIHKG, we use Telegram a lot. Because um, Telegram, first, it is trustworthy, and second, because it is safe. And we, we can also join different channels, groups, to, um, to look for the instant news, the most updated pieces of information. And in this way, we could always update ourselves uh, with new sources, new identification, and therefore we can tune our mindset. In this way, there won't be any leaders, and there will not be any leaders, because we're trying to group up, a, group up different people from all walks of life, and we have the same opinion, and we will do the same thing together. And speaking of people in all different walks of life, it also seems that even in addition to the protesters themselves who are doing all of this activity around the front line, that you have a lot of supporters behind the scenes. A lot of different people are, are trying to help the protesters, even if they're not marching themselves. Have you experienced this? And, and kind of what things do other people in the community do to kind of help the movement if they can't directly participate? Okay, before letting you have more information, let me tell you some background about Hong Kong. So as a 
former British colony, we try not to do things, we try not to settle things with violence. Okay, we're talking about check and balance, the rule of law, a well-built system. However, ever since the extradition bill and the anti extradition bill movement, we see that the government is trying to take advantage of the the rule of law, the juridical system to serve the whole government. And in this way, we think that, okay, we have to use our own methods. Okay, some of us, they may go on to the front line. However, not every single one of us are that brave. And therefore, people trying to use their own method, their own resources and time to, to collaborate on the whole thing. For example, some, um, some people, they're rich and they could offer the front line and resources, gears, how, and some are more, some are nurses, some are registered nurses. Okay, they don't offer masks or gears, but they provide medical services. Some are drivers and they provide um, the front liners with transportation services because it is quite dangerous to travel on public transport. Like with the NTL, it is serving the government. Um, for me, I once used a school bus service. Usually, we don't call it to take a private car to take the Uber, but we, we name it school bus because most front liners, they are the youngster students. Um, so we just make a good name of school bus. And the driver's nice. Um, he provides me with some clothes to get changed. And he, but we don't fully trust the drivers. Okay, usually when we use the school bus service, we will just ask the drivers to drive us somewhere near, nearby our home, but not exactly where we live. That absolutely makes sense. Even in this time and age, when you do have people supporting you, you still have to be careful at the end of the day. You never know whose side people are on. And you can clearly see by this entire saga that it's become very divisive in Hong Kong. You have the yellows versus the blues. You have pro-democracy versus pro-Beijing. It's continuing to get further and further sort of schismed between the two factions. Do you feel hopeful that we can eventually try to, to move beyond this, to start trying to find solutions to the problem? Mm, to be honest, I don't think there's a women situation. Either the pro-democracy people are winning all, or the pro-government people are winning. Because they are two contrastive ideas. We want freedom, democracy. They want control, surveillance. Okay. For totalitarianism regime and freedom and democracy, they can't be blended together. It is not impossible. Therefore, what I could foresee is that um, protesters, they may be more violent and more tear gas from the police will be shot and the government will try all the ways to control us. And why do you think some Hong Kongers have started to become more and more extreme? Like, we see the violence growing each and every day. Like, what is your perspective on that? I think it's totally understandable. Um, we had peaceful marches, and we have been having peaceful marches for years, but the situation is not getting better. It's only deteriorating, and therefore people would use their own method to make changes. If I can't impress the government through peaceful demonstration, why don't I make some obstruction, destructions to catch the attention? At the end of the day, Destroying some premises is just a means for us to catch the government's attention, to let the government know, okay, we are disapproving your ideas and we need a change. And speaking of which, obviously the government's not been very responsive as of late. Um, instead, you, you've been fighting the police force directly themselves. How do you feel about the Hong Kong police force as a force itself? What did you feel like before the protest started and, and how do you feel about them now? Okay, when I was once a primary school student, um, I was told the police are some good men who protect our city and protect our safety. However, ever since the extradition bill, I feel that police are doing their best to destroy the protesters. See, they've got gears, they've got guns, tear gas, batons, they're well trained and well armed. However, 
I see that they're not professional. Ever since the extradition bill, people in Hong Kong, they literally have no trust and no faith in police. As they use bait hands, tear gas, and even the real guns to point at us. And do you think this is just an isolated incident with just some police officers? Or do you think this is becoming a systemic problem in the force? Okay, to tell you in a more scientific manner, or statistically, not all three, not all 30,000 calls, they use violence. But in general, in a more popular trend, more and more police, they are trying to use greater force, okay? From betas to tear gas and to the point three eight. But the point is, the police don't really understand what's behind and what's happening. They just care about whether there is some so-called unlawful assembly or there are some so-called rioters, but they never try to understand. Or, in other sense, in other words, they don't even have the ability to understand. All right, something's happening. They're coming, they're coming. Mike, Mike, police are there. Get the get, gas mask on. Get ready to move, though. See? That's the water cannon. Be careful because they might even spray at us. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Don't be down, don't be down.
加强队，行。At least I've just fired at tear gas and people were just walking away. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. People were not being violent, were just walking away calmly. There's only a few protesters about this, mostly yeah. photographers, journalists, neutral people here. It is, yes, yeah. It's, it's mental, it's just crazy. They're attacking the wrong people.